Catherine and her husband-to-be are in a church getting married. It was an arranged marriage because Catherine comes from a very poor family. Later at night, her maid Anna helps Catherine get undressed. She wonders if Catherine is nervous about consummating her marriage tonight. Catherine is not. Her husband Alexander walks in and asks if she's comfortable with everything. Alexander tells Catherine that she will stay within the house and not leave. Catherine protests this because she enjoys the outdoors. However, Alexander ignores her and commands her to remove her clothes. She does. Then Alexander turns off the lights and removes his clothes. But he just goes straight to sleep. Catherine stands there awkwardly in the dark. Much later, Catherine tries to get some fresh air while staying in the confines of the house. Her days are monotonous and boring. Some days she just sits on the couch staring at the fireplace. This causes her to doze off into sleep. Catherine isn't treated as an equal to the men. She's ignored during dinner. Alexander's father Boris even tells Catherine that her duty is to make sure she supplies Alex with a male air, so she must always try at night. When Alexander enters their bedroom, he yells at Catherine to stand up, then commands Catherine to remove her clothes. He makes her face the wall while he sits in the corner wanking his banana. He is able to relieve himself. One day, Alexander has left to tend to an explosion at the coal mines. Boris says he will have to leave as well. Boris hopes that Catherine can regain her strength during this time, and he hopes she can give Boris a son soon when he gets back. Once he leaves, Catherine feels free to do as she pleases. She opens a window, and she immediately gives a sigh of relief. She even explores outside after being forced to stay in the confines of the house. During a nap, she's awakened by Anna yelling at a man. She sees a random man running, so she goes to see what is going on. She goes to the quarters of the men that work for Alexander. Catherine is upset with the men falling around while getting paid. Then, she's shocked to see Anna hanging from the ceiling. Sebastian says they are just weighing her. She demands them to let Anna down. She tells all the men to face the wall. Anna rushes out there as fast as she can. Meanwhile, Catherine stares at Sebastian intently. Catherine asks how much she would weigh. Sebastian goes to her and grabs her to put her on the sling. Catherine is upset about this though, and is able to escape Sebastian's grasp. Before she leaves, she tells them that she will keep a close eye on them because they are wasting her husband's money by fooling around. Later, Catherine goes to Anna to ask her what the man's name was. Catherine has no regard to how Anna was feeling. Anna is still panicked after being violated by the men. But Catherine just shows her interest and concerns about Sebastian. When Catherine leaves, Anna cries. One morning, Catherine is out in the fields while Sebastian wonders if she's lost. Catherine ignores him though and keeps walking. Late at night, Catherine hears a knock at her door. It's Sebastian who tells her that he's bored. He tries to get into her room, but Catherine tries to push the door closed. Sebastian is able to overpower her and asks if she's bored. Sebastian tries to force himself onto Catherine, but she fights back. Eventually, Catherine can't fight her urges anymore and lunges on Sebastian willingly. The two do the deed just lasting less than 20 seconds. The next day, Catherine and Sebastian do it again. Later, Father Peter pays her a visit. He wonders why Catherine hasn't been attending church, so he assumes it must be her health. He advises her to just stay indoors. Catherine looks to Anna and deduces that Anna must have told Father Peter that she's out exploring a lot. As soon as he leaves, Catherine does it with Sebastian again. Meanwhile, Anna goes to the woods alone to harvest some mushrooms. Sebastian interrupts her. He's out walking the dog and he says the dog shouldn't be tied up too long else they get too wild. Anna agrees and says the dog was indeed tied up too long. However, she's referring to Catherine. Anna tells Sebastian that if Alexander were to find out, he'd be upset. Sebastian ignores her warnings and goes to Catherine to do it again. Anna watches from the key peephole in the hallway. Anna eventually leaves when Sebastian looks at the door. Later, Anna warns Catherine that Boris has returned. This alerts Catherine to do her daily boring tasks as she did before. Finally at dinner, the two catch up. He wonders where Alexander is at, but Catherine doesn't know either. Boris asks Anna to bring a special bottle of wine. However, Catherine drank every bottle. Boris wonders how it's all gone. Anna doesn't reveal the truth about Catherine drinking at all. Boris demands Anna to get down on her knees so that he can treat her like an animal. She crawls away when Boris dismisses her. Catherine just watched during all of this. She doesn't care about Anna's well-being at all. The next day, Boris goes to Sebastian and repeatedly hits him hard. He asks Edward to lock him up. When Catherine hears of this news, 
she goes looking for him. Later, Boris lectures Catherine on everything she's done. He says Catherine has brought his family shame. Catherine demands Boris to let Sebastian out. However, Boris doesn't listen. He calls Catherine a failure for not giving Alexander a legitimate heir. Then he slaps Catherine so hard, her poor ancestors felt it. Then sometime later, Catherine asks Boris to let Sebastian out. Boris throws glass and refuses to do so. When Boris leaves to the bathroom, Catherine decides to lock him in by propping a chair on the doorknob. Catherine asks Anna to sit and eat with her. She finally asks Anna to tell her about herself. Meanwhile, groans from the bathroom can be heard. Anna tries to go help Boris, but Catherine demands her to sit back down. It's implied that Catherine had poisoned Boris. When his grunts for help stop, Catherine tells Anna to go to town to grab a doctor. So Anna rushes out. Meanwhile, Catherine goes to Sebastian to free him. Once Anna has brought the doctor over, it's too late as Boris is dead. Anna screams in pain and agony after being forced to play these rich people's games. Much later, Catherine receives a letter from Alexander saying he won't be returning for his father's funeral. Catherine hopes Alexander won't ever return. During the funeral, Catherine poses with her dead stepdad. Anna then stares at her, knowing what Catherine had done. Eventually, Sebastian is cleaned up looking like a fine piece of. Excuse me, Catherine calls him the man of the house. Later, Catherine tells Anna that she will be asking a different maid to bring all her food from now on as a precaution. This makes Anna upset as she beats the dough pretty hard. The other maid tells her not to blame herself because Boris was old. It might have been the wrong mushrooms. It's revealed that Anna hasn't been speaking. She's become mute. Sebastian is worried that Anna may start speaking again, but Catherine says he won't. Catherine wonders if Sebastian loves her. He admits that he does. She says that she will never be parted from Sebastian. She'd rather die than be separated from him. In the middle of the night, Catherine wakes up to a noise outside. She realizes that her husband has come home. So she tells Sebastian to hurry up and get dressed. She hides Sebastian in the closet. Then Alexander enters. Alexander finds a belt on the floor. Catherine lies about finding it in the fields. Then, Alexander criticizes Catherine for growing fat. Catherine tries to get him out of the room by offering him tea. However, he stays in the room, and Catherine serves him tea there. The two drink. Alexander finally admits that he knows that Catherine has been whoring around. He says Catherine has been spreading her legs so wide that he was able to find out from miles away. Alexander reminds her that Boris had bought Catherine for less than the cost of a cow. He feels humiliated and wants Catherine to change her ways by staying in the house and reading her prayer book. Catherine is pissed about this, so she gets up and grabs Sebastian from the closet. She decides to lay Sebastian on the bed and mount him while Alexander watches. Alexander doesn't take long to get up and slap Catherine. Sebastian and Alexander begin to wrestle. Alexander decides to bite Sebastian's neck. This pisses Catherine off so she hits him hard. Then she keeps hitting him even after his death. Sebastian decides to bury the body in the woods. Catherine grabs the horse and shoots it. The force blows her back. The horse is so large they weren't able to dig a grave for it. Catherine thinks it's a good idea to just pile dirt over it. After doing all of this, Sebastian has trouble sleeping because he constantly sees Alexander's face. He wonders how Catherine is able to move on so quickly from this traumatic experience. Catherine reminds him that they did it together to preserve their love, and because Alexander was going to kill him, they mount each other and do it again. The next morning, Catherine and Sebastian have breakfast together while Anna serves them tea. After days, the horse is decomposing badly and since it was badly hidden, it's pretty much in plain sight. Sometime later, Agnes goes to Catherine to let her know that Alexander had slept with her daughter and fathered a boy named Teddy. Apparently, Alexander has been staying with Agnes and her daughter until the daughter died. Alexander became Teddy's legal guardian and Agnes has paperwork to prove it. Agnes then tells Catherine that Alexander was headed to his estate and suddenly disappeared. She assumes he's dead. However, Catherine doesn't think so. He's just missing, she says. Anna is listening to this juicy conversation as she pretends to tend to the food. Eventually, Agnes and Teddy both move in. Sebastian thinks Agnes is lying. However, Catherine reassures him that they have legitimate paperwork. Sebastian is confused as to how Alexander was even able to have a child with someone else because Alexander never touched Catherine. During dinner, Agnes tells Catherine that Teddy will take over Catherine's room. Catherine eventually agrees but says she will take over Agnes' room. One day, 
Teddy sweetly asks Catherine if he can come explore the fields with her. She obliges. Teddy compliments Catherine his beauty. He is a super sweet child. Meanwhile, Sebastian is back to living with the rest of the men in the dirty barracks. He sees Agnes in the woods one day and asks to join her. Agnes is a little scared at first, but allows it. One day, Anna catches Catherine inspecting her pregnant belly. She decides to go to Sebastian to tell him the good news. However, Sebastian pushes her away because he doesn't want to be hanged. He says as long as Teddy is around, Sebastian will remain in his barracks. Much later, Catherine tries to call for Sebastian. Teddy interrupts her though. Then, Catherine decides to push the boy off of her. He cries while running away. Catherine calls for Sebastian again, but she's ignored. News breaks out that the boy is missing. Everyone in the house goes looking for him in the woods. Sebastian is able to locate Teddy who is sitting by a raging river, right by a waterfall. Then at night, while everyone sits by a fire, Sebastian walks in with Teddy. He starts ordering them to grab blankets for the boy. However, Agnes tells him to get out of the house because he's a nobody ordering people around. Catherine runs to Sebastian who is now packing up to leave. Catherine says she'll do anything to keep him from leaving. Sebastian admits that he had the perfect setting to push the boy down the waterfall, but it's too late now. Catherine tells him it's not too late. Catherine goes to Agnes and tells her to get some rest, and she can watch over Teddy. Agnes thanks Catherine as she leaves the room. Catherine looks over Teddy with disgust. She allows Sebastian to enter the room. Then, Teddy wakes up from his slumber. He's confused as Catherine tries to hold him. Then she puts a pillow over his face as he struggles and screams. Sebastian goes over to help Catherine suffocate the boy. Once it's done, Sebastian is shook. It takes a while for him to realize what had happened. Catherine sits in the chair, sobbing or pretending to sob. Later, Anna walks into the room realizing Teddy is dead. Meanwhile, Sebastian is in the woods crying over what had transpired. When Agnes finds out, she isn't able to contain her cries. Dr. Burden questions Catherine about what exactly happened. Catherine says she fell asleep for just 10 minutes then eventually, Teddy had stopped breathing. She says she had discovered it right before Anna had walked into the room around 5 o'clock. Dr. Burden wonders if Catherine was asleep for longer and someone else had come into the room and suffocated the boy. Dr. Burden comments about Teddy's bruises. Catherine is quick to defend that the bruises came from the waterfall. However, Dr. Burden says the bruises weren't there before. Later, a group of them continue to wonder how everything happened. Catherine tries to dismiss everyone's theories. Then, Sebastian enters the room and confesses everything, including how Catherine used a pillow to suffocate Teddy. He also tells them how Catherine killed Alexander and how she poisoned Boris with mushrooms. Sebastian admits that Catherine's motive was for them to be together, but he felt suffocated by her. He calls Catherine a disease. Catherine says Sebastian is lying, so he tries to lunge for her, but the two men hold him back. Catherine says that it was Anna and Sebastian who did this. She doubles down on the lie and says Anna is the one who picks the mushrooms. And Anna and Sebastian must have had a secret relationship. She says Boris had beaten Sebastian before he died which is enough motive to kill someone. Then, Catherine puts on a performance of a lifetime and says Teddy was like a child to her. Agnes goes to Catherine to hold her hand. When Anna hears of the accuser tie-ins, she's dumbfounded, but can't speak. Catherine stares at her with a fierceness in her eyes. Anna decides this is her fate and remains quiet. Anna and Sebastian are then brought away for their crimes. Eventually, Catherine remains in the house as Agnes leaves. Catherine is pregnant but looks empty and void of any emotion. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.